Welcome back Integrity Fam to another Academy session and today we're talking about open redirects paired with an OAuth vulnerability. So let's immediately have a look at our lab and this is provided by Portswigger and yeah, let's have a look. So we're going to try to steal an OAuth access token via an open redirect vulnerability. And why is this important? Open redirect is usually not really a vulnerability in itself, but it can be used to chain vulnerabilities together. We're going to log in, as you can see over here, with our social media sign up, sign in, and we're going to use the username Wiener, which is the username with the password Peter that we have provided by the lab. Then we're getting a question if we authorize the social media platform to get access to our profile and our email. We say yes, and then we logged in. We can see our username, our email address, and our API key is hidden. So let's log out and let's just check what happens if we do that again. We see that we stay logged in to the social media platform and we are once again logged in as we've just seen a second ago. All right. So now that we know how this works, let's have a look at that in our proxy. And we do see the OAuth flow starting with the request that I have marked yellow for you. And there is the first request to slash off, then to OAuth callback, to slash me, then we are having slash authenticate. And then after that, we go to just the main page, which concludes the login. At this point, we're getting redirected to the main page and we're logged in with our user. But let's have a look at the first request over here. Let's send this to repeater. And what you're seeing over here is the request that starts the OAuth login flow. And we do see a parameter called redirect URI, which seems to be interesting because it already has the word redirect in it. So we could think as we are searching for an open redirect, what would happen if we just say, instead of go to OAuth callback, which is the regular address, go to google.com. What we're seeing is that we are getting a bad request. So this is not working. There is a protection mechanism in place on server side that is not allowing us to do that. So now we can think, can we maybe directory traverse to another page instead? And we're going to try um, to hop one folder back and go to post. And why do we try to go to post? Because we know this page from the web app. We know that the posts are listed under slash post and they all have a post ID. So let's try it out. We just say post then question mark post ID equals one. We're going to send this to the server and we do see a difference here. So now we're not getting a 400, but a 302 found and we're seeing in the server response that now we are getting redirected to this page of our choice. So we have found a directory traversal within the application. And let's just try it out. We're going to intercept our traffic. We're going to log in, skip to the interesting request that we have just seen. And within that, we just do what we have done in the repeater. So we say slash, go to post and directory traverse one folder up and then to post ID one. And once we do that, we can just click on intercept is off and go back. And what we would expect right now is that, that is that we are looking at a post. And as you can see, this is actually exactly what's happening. The interesting part here is just that now we do have the access token in the URL bar. And this is uh, added to it, but after the hash marks, this is only visible for the user who is having the browser open. So as an attacker, we still need to get that information out somehow. And this is why we keep on searching for an open redirect that allows us 
to get this information out. And we find this next post button over here. And what it does is it brings us to post number two. And if we look at this in our proxy, we can say, okay, we can, uh, we can see that it is just taking a path and it is redirecting us to whatever you fill in in there. So we just say post post ID two, it says 302 found and the location response header is set directing us to that path. Let's try the same thing what we have been trying before. Instead of going to post, we are trying to go to HTTPS example.com. And if this works, we, and it actually works as we're seeing over here, we are going to example.com. So this is an open redirect. There is no restriction in place telling us where we are allowed to go, which makes an open redirect. And if we look at um, the following response, we do see that we actually land at example.com. Okay, so now we have a directory traversal issue. We have an open redirect. We mark that in red to keep in mind which of those requests are the interesting ones. And then what we do is we are going to use that in the same request that we've been using before that starts and kicks off the OR flow. So now we're going to say um, dot dot slash post next and the path is taking us to an interesting endpoint. And for now, we're going to use example.com again just to showcase that it is working. Of course, this is not of interest to an attacker. So the attacker usually has his own website. And we can see the um, attacker's malicious server here and his URL, his exploit server with that URL listed in the lab. And what we can do right now is we can say, okay, um, we're setting up a page with Right now, it just says hello world, but we're going to add a script. And the script is doing one thing. It says window location, we're going to slash question mark plus document location hash substring one. What that is doing, if you see the hash mark in the URL bar, it takes everything that comes afterwards and it starts at the first character. So that means that hash mark is stripped and all the content behind the hash mark is used. And why are we doing that? We will see that in just a bit. Let's take this URL, our exploit server, and let's try the same, well, open redirect again that we have been using a minute ago. So we once again say O of callback slash dot dot slash post slash next. And in our path parameter right now, instead of going to example.com, we're going to fill in our exploit server. And if we click on intercept is off and have a look at what's going on, we see that we land on the attackers page. And we also see that once again, the access token was added. And the script is just taking us, if, if we have a look at the access log, we, we do see that there is no trace of that token because the, the script is not really doing much at this point apart from ta taking us to that URL. But now we have to go ahead and make sure that we as an attacker can also see the access token. And the easiest thing to do is to not have it like the access token, not have it after the hash mark, but as the actual path. Because the path is locked in the access log and this is visible to the attacker. So we're going to say, we are checking if we do have a hash on the attacker's website. If we don't have that, we initiate an OAuth login flow. So we go to a OAuth login URL, 
we are using the open redirect to redirect to the attacker's server. And we have an else class that says, if there is a hash mark with some content afterwards, then we put it after the uh, slash mark instead of after the hash mark. So once again, I will repeat this. We want to have the access token that is initially appended with a hash mark. We want to have that value extracted and appended to a path because only that way an attacker can see it in his access log. And this is exactly what this script is doing that we have set up over here. So let's view the exploit. We do see that we are getting redirected to the exploit server. And now if we look closely in the URL bar and in the access log, we do see that the token now is not just appended with a hash mark anymore, but now it is actually used as uh, a parameter in the, the path slash. And now an attacker can see that. So let's use that access token and let's have another look at the login, the OAuth login flow and see where this access token is becoming interesting. And we do see a request to slash ME. And that one gives us the API key. And the API key is the secret here that we want to extract. So that is our golden nugget that we want to get of our victim. So we're going to send this to repeater and the access token is used as a bearer token in an authorization request header. So once we set the one that we've just obtained in our access log, we do get the API key. But as you see, it's still by our user, Peter Wiener, because we have been exploiting ourselves. So let's click on deliver exploit to a victim right now. That emulates a victim visiting our exploit website. And we do get another access token. All right, so you know what is about to come up right now. We're going to exchange the bearer token here. And right now we do see that our victim was the administrator and we are getting the administrator's API key. And with that, we have a wonderful secret we will fire it into the answer box in the lab, and we do see that we have solved the lab. All right, let's quickly reiterate what we have seen. So we had a lab and we wanted to search for an open redirect. We saw that there was an OAuth login and we followed the flow of that login. We found a redirect URI and tried to redirect to a page of our choice, but that didn't work. We directory traversed instead to a page on the same domain, which was allowed. And then on that domain, on the blog website, we found an actual open redirect, allowing us to go to any website in the world. So now we have chained our open redirect with the directory traversal and we used the OAuth login flow to put all that together so that if a victim initiates that login flow but has this redirect URI manipulated by an attacker and we've done that by setting up our attacker exploit server, he will get redirected back to the exploit server and then we extracted the access token that is appended with a hash, which means only the user in that browser can see it. We've extracted that information and put it down as a parameter in after the, the, the slash path. And with that, the attacker got access to that information in his server access log because in the access log, you see every path and parameter that was queried. And then as the attacker, we used that information and used the regular endpoint body OAuth flow to get back the API 
key. And that was it. And with that, we collected the secret body administrator. All right. I hope that you learned something today. I know this was a long one. You might want to watch it again to digest all the information. But hey, if you have any questions, put them down below in the comment section. You know where to find us. Give this video a like. That's really important to us. And also subscribe in the top right corner. And with that, I see you folks soon.